This is breaking news from PIX11. A breaking news from PIX11, I'm Erin e. LeBeau. Buckingham Palace just tweeting out that Queen Elizabeth II has died at the age of 96. Oh, here is that tweet. It reads, quote, the queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The king and the queen consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. The king and the queen consort being Charles and Camilla Duchess of Cornwall. The announcement coming mere hours after the palace announced she was under medical supervision at the castle in Scotland. A doctor saying, quote, they were concerned for Her Majesty's health. Oh, here's a live picture from outside Balmoral now. Uh, members of the royal family rushed to be at her side, uh, some canceling long-planned engagements upon hearing the news. Uh, there were signs that the queen was not well yesterday. Uh, she canceled a virtual meeting as doctors advised her to rest. Uh, she had a busy Tuesday, though, formally asking Liz Truss to become the next prime minister of Britain. And just two days later, she has died. The queen reigned for more than 70 years, making her the longest reigning monarch. With a look back at her life, here's Tamsin Fidel. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor was born into royalty, the first daughter of the Duke and Duchess of York, later King George VI and Queen Elizabeth I. She became heir presumptive after the abdication of her uncle, King Edward VIII, in 1936, and after the passing of her father in 1952, a 25-year-old Queen Elizabeth was officially named head of the Commonwealth. Queen Elizabeth II was coronated on June 2, 1953, beginning a reign that included major political changes, meetings with 12 sitting U.S. presidents, and more than a handful of hardships. At the time of her death, Queen Elizabeth was not only the longest living and longest reigning British monarch, but also the world's longest serving female head of state. In a royal tenure that long didn't come without criticism and controversy, the first being her engagement to Prince Philip. Some royal advisors deemed the prince, who had little financial standing and was foreign born, an unsuitable partner for then Princess Elizabeth. Regardless, the pair married in 1947 and had their first child, Prince Charles, less than a year later. They had four children total Charles, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward. Charles married his wife, Princess Diana of Wales, in 1981. The fairy tale wedding was broadcast to a global television audience, and 600,000 spectators lined the streets near St. Paul's Cathedral to catch a glimpse of the couple. A kiss, which receives a roar of approval from the crowd. But despite fairy tale appearances, all of Elizabeth's children struggled in their personal lives. She referred to 1992 as her Annus Horribilis, or horrible year. During the first three months of her 25th year on the throne, she witnessed the breakdown of Prince Andrew's marriage to his wife, Princess Sarah, and Princess Anne's marriage to equestrian captain Mark Phillips. Later, Prince Charles formally split from his wife, Princess Diana. The pair officially divorced in 1996, two months after the queen urged them to do so. Perhaps the most devastating and most enduring tragedy of the Queen's reign came in 1997, when Diana died in a car crash a year after her divorce from Charles. She left behind two children, young Prince William and Prince Harry. The glamorous activist was an international icon whose tragic death left a lasting impact on the royal family's legacy. Mourners left offerings outside of Kensington Palace for months. On September 5, 1997, Queen Elizabeth paid tribute to her late daughter-in-law during a live television broadcast. Her funeral took place in Westminster Abbey the next day. The youngest son of Diana and Charles, Harry, later left the royal family with his American wife, actress Meghan Markle, in a bombshell interview with Oprah. The pair accused members of the royal family of racism. Though Markle clarified the queen was uninvolved, just a month later, the queen lost the love of her life, Prince Philip, at the age of 99. Elizabeth maintained a high approval rating throughout her reign, and the long-serving queen, with her monochromatic outfits, elaborate hats, and well-documented love of corgis, was as much of a pop culture icon as she was a nation's figurehead. 
When England hosted the Olympics in 2012, she started an opening ceremony sketch alongside James Bond actor Daniel Craig. On the stage, she was immortalized by Helen Mirren in the Tony Award-winning play, The Audience. On screen, the royals were featured on the critically acclaimed Netflix series, The Crown. Elizabeth's oldest son, Prince Charles, is next in line for the throne at 72 years old. He is the oldest heir apparent in the history of the monarchy. Well, now King Charles, his wife Camilla, Queen Consort, and his sister, Princess Anne, were with the Queen at Balmoral. Other members of the royal family, including Charles' sons, Prince William and Harry, were said to be on their way. Meanwhile, let's take a look live outside Buckingham Palace, where crowds gathered, including many people standing beside the gate, peering through. You can count on more and more people arriving throughout the day. Are those closest to the gate able to see a newly posted message proclaiming the Queen's passing. And PIX11 News will have continuing coverage of the death of Queen Elizabeth II all day long, starting at 4 p.m. For now, I'm Erin E. LeBeau. We'll send you back to your regular programming. This has been breaking news from PIX11.